Welcome to the Centre for Legal Innovation's Legal Techie Tuesday series. We are very excited to have Mark Tyndall, Vice President, Markets and Growth, APAC, from Neoda Logic here with us today. Mark will be demonstrating Neoda Logic's world-leading, no-code automation platform for professional services. Okay, setting the scene. Sometimes it does feel like when you are talking to technology providers or thinking about legal technology platforms, it does feel like there is there are a few platforms that are walking around with a hammer looking for nails. That is a technology solution in search of a problem. That was not my journey into legal technology and to Neota Logic. That actually started uh, a, a different way. And my example for today, and it's just one example, very specific example comes from 2018. So at that time, I was a litigator at Herbert Smith Freehills. Uh, the Banking Royal Commission was in full swing. We were acting for a listed financial services business. And I can expand pretty quickly beyond that to the whole profession and say that was a pretty challenging year. It involved a lot of challenging legal and business processes, uh, a whole lot of documents, a whole lot of witness statements, a lot of witness preparation, a lot of project management for solicitors and senior associates and corporate in-house teams, logistics, but also thinking about things like client care and self-care. And there were some really well-documented examples of where, again, as a profession, we did some amazing things, uh, but also when we made some substantial mistakes. Again, I'm referring to stories from the broader profession, some of them pretty widely reported. So my personal starting point on this journey um, from lawyer working those types of hours and working with those types of kind of processes in the financial services regulatory space, went on to legal operations and on to uh, being an automation specialist at Herbert Smith Freehills and then joining Yoda Logic. But in dealing with all of that material and all of those processes and privilege claims and communications with clients and things like that, my starting point and the problem essentially that we're talking about today, the one we want to solve is very broad. And it's the simple one of realizing that there has to be a better way and a more intentional way of delivering our legal services. Firstly, without the massive cost to the client, um, without the massive cost to ourselves, without the mistakes, and to make those services just simply more efficient and simply more profitable. So what is the kind of problem that Neota is trying to solve? Well, we're trying to solve some key things. We're, we're delivering expertise to more people more often with more consistency, with greater accuracy, with far fewer hours spent and less cost. And this year is another good example of how, you know, our always, our evolving always on culture has really crystallized in, into some challenging processes and work practices this year. Um, a really powerful thing to see this year has been, and I don't know if this is the right kind of emotion to focus on, but many of our customers experience experiencing this real sense of relief that I've heard from customers this year, knowing that their kind of deep domain expertise is now available to their stakeholders to their business 24 seven, and that they're not under that pressure, you know, with four bits of advice sitting on their list to do at number 13 on the list and 17 on the list and 24 on the list. They now have the tools to, to do that for the business at scale and do it quickly and do it at a real depth that delights those stakeholders, those clients, and that does it really consistently every time. So let's take a step back. Um, I've got some capabilities here on the screen, but I want to tell you kind of who, who Neota is, who Neota Logic is as a company and as a platform. So we're the market leader in no code automation technology in the legal space. We were founded in 2010. We are the only no code platform that has these three core capabilities delivered at depth, expertise automation, workflow automation, and document automation. We're a global company headquartered in New York City, We've got an office here in Melbourne that supports our Asia Pacific um, customers. And we've got another office as well in, in London, which supports our Europe, UK, EMEA customers. So we've talked about who I am, who Neota is, kind of what we do. Um, uh, I want to jump in quickly just to what the core capabilities are, because after that, we're just going to look at examples. I'm going to show you how we implement 
things, how we use a design driven approach to deliver solutions um, to achieve the kind of benefits that, that we've already set out. You can see on the screen that there's three core, quite high level categories or capabilities, categories of solution or capabilities that Neurologic um, leads the market with. Expert advisors, so taking facts from a user, taking data from other systems through integrations and applying business rules, law, policy, whatever it might be to those facts and giving the user some type of outcome. That's often advice, something they should do or not do. Sometimes it's kind of more general, kind of hand-holding through a process or guidance about how to tackle, say, using a document or how to deal with a certain type of transaction in certain circumstances. Speaking risk, red flag analysis, due diligence type work, and we'll look at an example of, of what an expert advisor is during our discussion today. Intelligent workflow. This is one of the superpowers of the Neurologic platform um, and where we're kind of in this kind of world leading position. This is where you take a complex or even a simple business process and streamline it through automation. So mapping out key actions, events, resources to be called on at the right time um, to achieve a, a goal, a key goal. So it's linking together people and data over time to achieve a collective goal. And it's, it's a really exciting kind of development in our platform over the past couple of years as well. This is really big in routing, triaging, um, managing processes generally, business process automation generally. Document automation, this is the third key pillar of the platform. It's where you use uh, user inputs, logic, rules again, to firstly select a Word document template, a precedent that you've already developed, marked up, or a series of documents, a group of documents, and draft those in a really bespoke way, particular to the user's circumstances. Solutions on the Neurologic platform combine all three of these capabilities all the time. It's rare to see just one or even like just two of them, but this is a, a, a nice way of understanding at a high level, the capabilities that the platform offers. So we're going to jump into a practical example. Now, I, I don't want to kind of go into too much detail uh, around the, the, this actual use case, but we, we talked, I talked about the Banking Royal Commission before. I talked about some challenging processes. One thing litigators will often try and tell you is that there's not much about their very particular work that, that can be automated. And that's simply not true. There's, I know there's some law firm team members uh, and also corporate kind of in-house team members here in the audience today, and many of you will attest having done quite a bit of litigation that um, there is a lot of process heavy work that can be automated. The, the one thing I want to talk about today about is, is privilege claims. Now, during in the financial services regulatory space, but generally in any um, regulatory investigations, commissions of inquiry, litigation, there is so much document discovery work that is done and involved in that work is making claims for privilege so over material in which you have a valid claim for LPP or other types of privilege to protect your interests, you'll, you'll like rightfully protect your interests at law. Now that to say the least can be an incredibly cumbersome process when uh, a, a large scale document review uh, exercise is underway and there are junior to mid-level to senior um, lawyers involved in the process. And the, there's also an interface with the client. When there is uncertainty about how to deal with one of these privileged claims, um, it needs to be escalated through a whole series of steps. So I'm gonna show you how we solve for this problem. A couple of weeks ago, it, uh, I had cause to build this solution for, for a conversation I was having about privilege claim workflow management. Okay, how would you create a workflow from scratch on Neotologic? So what you're seeing here is the, starting, the startings of creating a high level workflow solution on the platform. You give it a name, kind of assign it a category, assign it a database. So all Neotologic solutions that you kind of see here today in this demonstration are supported by no-code database capabilities. When you build an application or build a workflow, a database can spin up behind that application in an automated way to track all of the activity that goes on in that application and all of the data that's generated. So here's workflow. And we're starting on our journey of building out this privilege claim escalation kind of workflow interface within a law firm and with a client. And you can see already it's very process design driven, process engineering driven. What this tool is, is a BPMN aligned 
um, workflow or process mapping um, tool that also allows you to execute or run those processes, not just map and understand them, but to actually run them. So you can see here that I'm creating the first action in this workflow. It's called query, like analyst creates query. So an analyst, and you'll see here that I've started with only one pool and one lane. So in BPMN and kind of business process management notation, we have, and you've probably seen this before, swim lanes, which designate roles that are key to delivering on this process, on this workflow. So you can see I've actually created a couple more swim lanes here. But the one I'm starting with and, and interested in just for the moment is this, this first one. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it analyst because in some of the larger firms, like the one I, I worked at, there was a dedicated team of analysts who would do a lot of this first level review. Now, just remember like this, this workflow module can be used to map any type of process. I've picked such a particular use case today, which is privilege claims and escalating those claims, those kind of privilege claims to um, internally within the firm and to clients. But this can, and I'll show you another example later about leasing, but this one's a really neat one and one that I built out recently. So here you start to see that I'm now connecting up this first action of, of raising a query or creating a query about a privilege claim um, by creating an automated email. To actually email the next pool of users in this workflow, which is the solicitor team. Now these solicitors are responsible for reviewing these queries and trying to resolve them or answer them when the analyst team isn't sure about the decision they've made. Is this content, is this document privileged or not? I'm not sure because of these circumstances. Now usually this would be a really clunky kind of email back and forth. There'd be emails, there might be Word documents, you'd be attaching kind of the underlying document, the thing you're looking at to see if it is privileged or not. And things slip through the cracks. They get forgotten, they don't get prioritized. Um, people are busy doing other things. And this is where workflow creates that kind of reliability and consistency and traceability. So all of the activity that occurs in this workflow is um, recorded and traceable. So you can see now that I'm creating a, an XOR gate, a logical gate to say, well, this is a turning point. This is a decision point for the system. Was this query, when it was looked at by the solicitor, resolved by the solicitor? Or are they also unsure about how to treat this document? Now, in this case, I'm mapping out the workflow to say, if they're sure, if they've actually said, analyst, I've got an answer for you, I can tell you definitively that this is privileged or is not, uh, then it'll generate automatically, generate an email back to the analyst saying, this is the outcome, and this is what you should do, analyst, to resolve this um, as a last step. But if it's not, you can see here in this, no uh, branch to this workflow, that we've got a whole range of opportunities to, to kick this workflow along, to involve a whole range of other users. Now, pause at this point to kind of note that all of these actions in these rectangular boxes here are placeholder applications. These are actually applications that you can build out on the Neurologic platform to do whatever task it is you need the workflow to do. So at the moment, we're in a kind of more static way, in a whiteboarding way, mapping out a complex workflow that could deliver value. There's power in just mapping this and understanding it because it immediately creates a conversation about the service that you're providing and the processes, the core processes that underpin that service. It's rare that legal teams do this, that they actually set out on paper the nuts and bolts approach to how they actually deliver their service. Now, if you incidentally do that as a function of automating those services, it's a beautiful, like a beautiful, I say it's a beautiful thing because it helps you to actually understand and communicate what you're doing and the value you provide to the business or to your clients. Um, but at the same time, you're building an executable process. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with the whole build of this entire workflow. So here's a, here's a, here it is at speed, the remainder of that workflow. You can see I've got these additional swim lanes. We've got the client now involved in this workflow and that information is passing from the law firm side over to the client side and also giving the opportunity for the client to take key actions. So not only have we got up here the law firm crowd involved in driving this workflow, but down below, we're actually offering the ability to, on the platform, get 
um, client users to engage with what we're doing here. Now we'll dive in, dive in quickly just to see what the actual content of some of these nodes are. So this email node, you can see you custom, you use all of the um, values or variables that have been collected up from the analyst in this first action step, and you can use them in an email here. So this fires off as a automated step as soon as the analyst has logged this query. And it essentially knocks on the door of the solicitor team and says, hey, I need you to take a look at this. Here's all the key information. And again, these solutions are supported by a database. So all of that information that's collected up from the analyst is available to be passed through to the, to the solicitor and the other steps um, for their review. You can see here, there's a condition editor here. So this is controlling where the process goes next. If the solicitor has resolved the query to true, then it means that we can send them down this shorter path of emailing the analyst with the outcome. And if in this case, when they say, they have not resolved the query, then we pass down this path to the senior associate, the leader senior associate on the matter for them to take a look at the, at the claim and see what they might think about it. Again, this is a relatively straightforward kind of implementation of triaging or taking a process that is otherwise messy offline or it's sitting in people's inboxes unactioned or it's sitting in attachments to documents without an outcome being achieved in, in an agreed time and allows this to be managed and tracked on platform. We'll come back to the data bit in a moment to see what it actually looks like to have an audit trail of, of everyone using these applications. So before we jump into what it looks like to kind of actually use this workflow, what the user experience of it is, we'll look at how you actually build these applications. So these, these action nodes here, they're all apps. They're all things that collect data from a user and they have an experience on screen. Um, and you can build those type of applications um, in a number of ways on the Neurologic platform. One is with Neurologic Canvas. And you can see uh, in this uh, context here, I'm creating a new application called Analyst Initiates Review Workflow. Analyst initiates that first query that should be fed through the workflow. So again, we're now at the application level. As a part of this broader workflow, I can, in a really streamlined drag and drop way, create an application that allows a user to interact with that workflow. So here you can see we get to define some kind of application level kind of settings like headings, what the actual design of the application looks like with pre-designed themes and things like that. We won't go into this too much except to say that you can do a lot with Neurologic Canvas to create questions, use really interesting, sophisticated logic to pass a user down a certain path, depending on what their circumstances are. So you can see here, I'm connecting up an, what we call an ask node. This is a question node essentially, which allows you to ask the user a question or a series of questions to gather up data. So we've connected up the start node and the first ask node, and we're gonna ask the user a question. This tool is really, it's all drag and drop. We definitely say that people can get started with Canvas with no training. And what you're doing is creating deployable web applications without code. Um, and in many cases in a few short minutes. So very streamlined. What I'm doing here is creating um, of many different kind of variable types or question types, I'm creating a list option type question. So I'm putting in the range of different queries that the analyst might have in respect of a document. Is it a query about relevance or responsiveness to a notice or to a, you know, a, a regulatory notice, for example? Is it a legal professional privilege claim? Is it a without prejudice privilege claim or a public interest immunity claim? Something like that. So you're giving options to the user, the analyst in this case, the initiator of this workflow, that one initiating action in the workflow. And the answers to these questions drive the logic. Where does the workflow go? Where does this user go? What's the experience? And the world really is your oyster um, in terms of the experience you can create for each given user in this type of workflow. Again, I've picked such a specific example today about you know, privilege claims, LPP claims, confidentiality. But I hope what comes across is the versatility and just ultimate flexibility of being able to 
design whatever application you want to collect whatever data you, you might need from a user, store it in a database and then have that accessible by other users over time in a workflow. There really is some powerful, powerful stuff you can do. And I'll, we'll look at another example again in a moment. So in this case, I'm asking a, a text question saying, well, okay, you've asked me the type of query. I'll say it's a LPP claim, but then I get to describe it with a, with a text kind of text box entry as well. We're not limited just to text entry and, you know, putting in dates or list selections. We can also um, use conditional logic to drive the user down different paths in a given application, a given web app. Now, in this case, what I'm going to say is, if the user has selected a certain type of claim, for example, in this case, legal professional privilege, I'll go relevance first, drive that user down path one in the application. And as an alternative, if they select LPP in this case, then they're driven down path two in the application. And you can just keep adding nodes below those, attaching them up and um, essentially developing a really, really nicely designed experience for the users that run through these apps. Again, we're not limited to just that type of conditional logic as well. We've got a whole bunch of other types of nodes which you can use, including formulas, if you've got to do mathematical functions, other logical rules, messages displayed on screen, which you can design, document outputs, email outputs that are triggered to the user or someone else. Again, question of design, what do you need this app to do and who is it serving? What's the data they need to put in and what's the data that they or others need to get out? Okay, so that's Canvas. We've got other really powerful tools like Neotologic Studio for building out even deeper, kind of more sophisticated capabilities of these applications. And you get some very, very granular control over form design, over data actions. So for example, how you interact with the no-code database that spins up behind these solutions. Really powerful development environment um, in Neotologic Studio as well. Okay, now let's give up on the, uh, the development tools because you, you probably want to actually say, well, what's the actual experience of, of using this type of workflow? So you'll remember that we started with this. We've mapped it out. Each of these nodes are applications built in Canvas or in Studio. And this first one is record query. So what does the analyst see when they actually initiate this workflow and have the experience of populating? the data in this application. Well, this is what it looks like. Now I built this whole solution in a bit over three hours, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that it's a very straightforward kind of structured approach to collecting up key information about this privilege query or whatever type of query they have. Text box inputs, yes, no questions, dates, kind of calendar drop downs, um, financials, lists of kind of key people um, that can be used for certain kind of purposes of contacting or emailing key people. You can see I'm providing a document reference and I'm actually uploading a file here. I'm actually uploading the key document over which we're, we're worried about, that we need some, we need to escalate um, to understand what the claim is over the material in this particular document. So already the analyst is providing some really rich structured data and that's all they need to do to kick off this workflow. They have essentially now commenced a really um, powerful train of events have now kicked into, um, kicked into gear. And we're gonna see where this email, you can see that node there, email solicitor team is now triggered. Okay, now we're in the solicitor's shoes. We're going about our work. We've got our workflow clear, but we get this email. Now this is the email that we automated earlier. It says, hi solicitor team, I'm raising a query and related to the particular document entered by the analyst and the title of the query that they gave it. And it gives the solicitor a link, a link, a clickable link. You can see in the structure of the email they've just received, a clickable link for them to continue this workflow. Now it means that they can pick up where the analyst has left off, review the information provided by that analyst as in summary form. It's a really neat way, completely up to you how you present that. The document itself is there for review, can be downloaded. Um, from straight from the database. You get all the description details, the proposal that the analyst has made in a really structured way, gives you very clear control over 
um, how data needs to be provided by each user in the process. Now, in this case, um, the solicitor is saying they're not confident about the judgment call they've made and they've actually provided some further information or a further prompt to a senior associate who's going to, to take a further look at or review of this document. So again, creating a structured form to present, streamline that workflow, streamline the presentation of this challenge, this, this problem as it escalates. Okay, so we're looking good. We've got some really nicely structured data. This workflow is ticking along really efficiently. Um, the solicitor, the analyst and the solicitor have not been confident in their ability to um, deal with this claim and it's already through to the senior associate to take a look at. Let's look at that now. Okay, we've had the solicitor review. It's gone through this logical gate. Has the query been resolved? No, it has not. It's triggered an email to the lead senior associate on the team, or at least to the team of the senior associates assigned to this matter or this client. And you'll see here that we're in the senior associates shoes now and this query has been escalated saying, Mark, the analyst and the solicitor, Jane, have not been able to resolve this and we need your assistance. The clock starts ticking. There's a 24 hour timer on this after which the senior associate can get a follow-up prompt, which is a reminder that's, um, that'll be a part of workflow in the coming months. So you can have these automated reminders. You haven't followed up. There's a bottleneck and it's you. Um, and that happens in an automated way. There, there doesn't need to be anyone hassling anyone manually. All right, so they've got all the structured data. The analyst comments, the solicitor comments, essentially what the ask is of that senior associate. And it's really clear for their review and action. Do you agree with the proposed steps put forward by the solicitor? In this case, they've said no. And they've said, actually, this is more complicated, this particular instance of this workflow and we do need client instructions. So in this case, we're going to streamline and bring the client in on this process. And here's the drafting of the email that the senior associate kind of provides that will go through to the client. So again, this is all tracked. It's all on platform. It's not going off platform. It's offering the opportunity for the client to participate on the platform, working directly with the data, not by email to resolve this query. This interface between law firm and corporate legal department has often been an arduous one and a really challenging one when it comes to that type of um, interface, how data flows, accountabilities, timelines, and the power of mapping and understanding and automating this workflow in this way creates the conversation for you and your clients to say, is this how we provide the service to you? Is this valuable to you? Because if it is, let's agree it and operate in this streamlined way. So you can see the clients, Oh no, this is repeating the other one. So what we now want to see is the client experience of this. So again, we're moving down from below this lead SA review. The query has not been resolved. So we're going to trigger this email to the client instructor. Now, what does it look like when the client instructor gets to review this content? It won't be much of a surprise to you. It's relatively uh, similar to the other experiences, the other applications I've built, but you can see that it sets out here based on um, what Imogen, the senior associate, has said that they need to review and provide instructions on this particular privilege claim. Okay, what does it look like when they click on that link, track through? You start to see the pattern. It keeps all this data on platform. The instructions are there. They get an opportunity to make some structured decisions, review the document again. They can download that. This can be presented in whatever ways required. Okay, in this case, we're gonna say that um, the client instructor actually needs the assistance of someone else within their business. They can't, they do need the help of a subject matter expert, some type of consultation on a technical matter or just a historical kind of dynamic or whatever had played out previously um, on a contentious regulatory matter, for example. And it allows the client instructor user to draft their email to their business kind of subject matter expert. Now, again, this is tracked along platform, so it's data that's visible, available to, to you as the, um, as the author and kind of owner of the product. Okay, we're duplicating more. We're kind of going through more of the same type of thing from here. So I won't spend too much longer on this, except to say the subject matter expert has the opportunity to comment on this as per the process. And the client then gets another view into it once the subject matter experts finalized it and the uh, 
the kind of your instructor has also had a role. So we won't spend too long except to say we get this last experience of the analyst, the senior associate and the solicitor saying, hey, here's the outcome. We've consulted, we've done this all on platform and the workflow ends with the analyst updating their relativity database with the outcome. Now, okay, what's, what's the power of this apart from just making sure everything's tracked, making sure that everything's streamlined, people don't miss anything, um, making sure we de-risk these processes so mistakes aren't made. There is an incredible amount of data that's generated when these workflows operate and it's generated as a matter of course. You can see here that every bit of data that's been created manually, like by the user that have put something in specifically, but also every state of every workflow instance is sitting there saying, and who's, it's, it, it's a powerful thing to be able to see who the bottleneck is and say that so many of these are stuck with Mark Tyndall <laughs> at a certain stage of the workflow. You can see all the documents that have been uploaded are available here for download or analysis in the database that supports these workflows. And again, every other bit of data, every other data point that's been collected or generated through reasoning by the platform is now stored in here. Now you might say, well, okay, that's good for an audit trail. If I ever need to unpick something that went wrong, I can do that. But it's actually much, much more than that. You can intervene if needed. You can have oversight of what's going on at a high level and intervene with this kind of resume action type button in the Yoda Data Manager. And it gives you an opportunity to, to, to really understand and jump in on processes when they might not be going so well. What this data also allows you to do is to surface bottlenecks or other problems in the design of your process or the design of your service. You start to see very quickly how long uh, tasks or um, sit with particular people or particular roles um, and it immediately affords an opportunity to go back to the drawing board after a matter of days to improve the service and continue, continue to design and iterate on that service. It's too late if it's six months down the track and you've got a broken process that, that you, you don't have any data to, to, to look at. So it's not only kind of that view, you, you can also work with dashboards as well, native to Neotologic. So you might have say some basic dashboards um, built out that show you where um, tasks are, are sitting and um, the success of them or otherwise. Um, you might do that natively in Neurologic here, or you might even do an integration, which is very common, an integration with Power BI or Tableau to visualize that data in places you already report. So if you're an Office 365 shop, you might already run Power BI dashboards and have those sitting in one place. Now, the power of um, using Neurologic and Neuro Data Manager that you've just seen is that you can pipe that data directly to, say, Power BI and start visualizing that, reporting that, you know, at one click level. There's no kind of Excel manipulation. There's no manual analysis that you need to do um, once you've set this up and dashboards and that on-demand reporting is something that's helping legal teams to really demonstrate the value that they're providing, um, but also to kind of either win additional work and be more targeted about how they kind of design and improve their service. But um, there's a lot of power for corporate in-house teams in getting their data uh, strategy straight identifying the business questions, the burning questions that are very much worth answering or the, the important ones to answer. And then using solutions like this on the Neurologic platform to ensure that you are collecting the right data to answer those key burning business questions. Uh, understanding risk and value. This is, in this case, you see in front of you here, it's kind of the, the data um, like visualized from an intake tool. So the types of risk uh, risk um, and cost analysis to doing certain types of work. Um, but the risk value matrix over there on the side is, is one of the key benefits of, of collecting this data. Okay, so I've talked too long about privilege claims and sounded probably <laughs> too much like a litigator. What about other use cases just to kind of throw around some other ideas of, of where this is useful? And there's also a capability that we haven't spoken about yet, which is document automation. So I wanna to talk to you about a leasing example. Now this is a much simpler workflow in many ways, but one that has been really important this year during COVID. Um, of course, we've had principles for commercial leasing um, sit across many of our customers, real estate portfolios. So owners of shopping centers and the like that have needed to very quickly and at scale, so sometimes in the thousands, 
engage with retail tenants to figure out what the right outcome should be and document that outcome under the code for commercial rent relief. So how do you do that without automation? How do you do that without designing an approach and a process and a, more importantly, a service, a legal service that allows you to negotiate, to discuss, to review, to understand a few thousand engagements or a few thousand interfaces with retail tenants about rent reduction or other forms of, of rent relief. So this is a basic workflow that allows a le leasing executive in at a shopping center level, generate a request to a legal team, not only generate a request, but actually generate a document, a letter and a contract that will give effect to those leasing principles for that specific retail tenant. Now, this streamlines potentially thousands of interactions, which otherwise would be totally unworkable. Um, we'll run it quickly. I'll show, firstly, what I might show you is how you mark up this type of document in Neotologic, or more importantly, in Microsoft Word. So Neotologic has a native Word toolbar that allows your users to operate where they've always operated and our view is where um, lawyers are gonna continue operating for quite some time, which is in Microsoft Word. It's really intuitive. It allows you to essentially build an application here in Word by adding variables to your document. So specific places where the tenant name or tenant ABN should appear or their address, but then also using these conditional spans to say, only provide this text or only provide this paragraph or this clause or this very particular drafting if certain conditions are met. In this case, if the selection is monthly rent repayments as opposed to a rent reduction or a rent free period, then we can put a condition around the monthly rent payments to say, only provide this paragraph, this clause in the agreement if this condition monthly rent payments is selected by the user. So very quickly, it's a very intuitive tool to use to mark up a document in a domain you're already familiar with and that your stakeholders are already familiar with and where you'll continue to maintain that knowledge. Really powerful to start saying, let's scale documents and these types of outcomes for, for potentially thousands of, thousands of business users. Okay, so you can see again here, I'm inserting some variables, the lease description. Okay, well, how does this document come to life? What does it actually look like when it's, in an application and in a workflow. So this document itself, as this has been marked up with this word toolbar, has become this application here, this concession agreement generator, which itself plays one part of a broader workflow. Now, what it means is the leasing executive can jump into this workflow, provide some basic details about the tenant, addresses, ABNs, the email for the retail tenant so and their email address because they're going to participate in this workflow too. A description of the premises. Again, this is pretty basic stuff. And then a selection. What type of concession do you want? Because that selection is going to drive a whole range of material content in that agreement as we saw based on those four different options. Really neat way of drafting a very bespoke cover letter and contract for a user that has no domain expertise. But at the same time, the legal team knows that this is the standard, that this is usable and they understand the risk profile of this particular document because the rules are clear and they built it. They know it because they built it. So you can see a rent reduction is the language used because that was the selection made by the user, uh, the end user. And you can see kind of the particular clause about rent reduction is in there and all the order numberings up to date, which is fantastic. So thousands of interactions there, streamlined, available 24 seven, no need to contact the lawyer anymore for that type of review. You can see now that this is triage. A lot of the stuff we've talked about today generates a, an email prompt for someone to take an action. This can be put in a portal. It can be put in a task list somewhere. It doesn't need to always be email, but in this case, we're using email. Um, and it allows the lawyer now, if they want to, to approve or reject or, you know, just a very simple approval step. But that approval step could be as sophisticated as you like. It could be a um, whole process of redrafting if needed. But in this case, the lawyer's just gonna 
accept that and say it's it's ready to go. Okay, so that's streamlined a few thousand interactions um, in a pretty straightforward way. They're the key examples I wanted to talk to you about today. Again, jump in with any questions you might have um, because I'm keen to kind of hear about anything you might be thinking about in the design technology and automation space that we'd be able to talk about. One of the key principles um, that, you know, Neotologic as a kind of consulting side that we, we provide, we're very design driven. So when we're working with customers on these types of solutions, and I think our friends at Academy XI for this slide, um, is to take a design driven approach. We won't go into this too much today, except to say, to circle back to where we kind of started, which is, let's be really intentional and conscious about legal technology in 2020 and 2021. Let's not walk around with a platform, a technology platform, like a hammer looking for nails, um, and look at the right technology for your purpose at this prototype and testing phase. Too many times as lawyers, we need to kind of essentially untrain ourselves to not jump from this problem space too quickly into prototyping and testing and, and trying out the tools. Now, you can please feel free to contact me and talk about trying out the tools and testing things. It's a powerful, um, it can be a powerful process to try something at, you know, without any cost to see what it is that is possible or achievable. The key thing that I guess we need to emphasize is that we need to spend time here at defining the problem. And it's a conversation that we have with all of our customers um, when they're tackling this type of automation solution, whether it's leasing, whether it's litigation, um, whether it's intake and triage, whether it's complex expert systems that are taking say for legislation and distilling that for users, whether it's within law firms, building arbitration kind of clause generators to service the rest of the law firm, it could be NDAs and you've probably heard a lot uh, about NDA automation from a whole range of people, but really focusing on the problem that you're trying to solve. And that can sound a bit trite. It's, it's, it's said a lot, but it's, it's never been more important to focus on um, truly defining and understanding that problem. I'm available to you now, or well, please do contact me at any time um, by email, give me a call. Please do connect with me on LinkedIn and you'll get some like updates from us as a matter of course, um, they're on LinkedIn as well. Christine, I can throw back to you if there's anything else that we need to cover off on today, I'm at your disposal. Thanks Mark for an amazing presentation and demonstration, that was great. It was really interesting to learn how service design principles and Neodologic's workflow and Canvas development tools empowers lawyers and operations teams to streamline, automate, maintain, and update complex metacritical processes all without a single line of code. So if there aren't any questions, we will draw to a close. Um, Mark is very happy for you to contact him on the details above um, after the session. A huge thank you to all of you who have attended today. As you know, the Centre for Legal Innovation is very much focused on these types of webinars, this type of information sharing, collaboration, and experience exchange. We are all about practical solutions. There will be many more webinars coming up in the Legal Techie Tuesday series in 2020. So don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook for announcements. We look forward to welcoming you back to one of our events and thank you again very much for joining us today. Thank you, Mark, that was wonderful. Thanks, Christine. I'm looking forward to all the next events too. So I'll see you all there. Thank you. Bye everyone. <laughs>